The iPad is very user friendly, um, not really customizable, it's application based, um, very mature. It was, like I said, one of the first ones to come out, or the first one to come out. Um, and uh, it's just very, very secure, very easy to use. Now the iPad 1 and the iPad 2, which we now carry, um, there's not a huge differentiator in terms of fundamentals. Have pretty much had the same operating system. The iPad 2 is lighter, it's faster, it's got a, a, a much faster processor, it adds a camera, um, and it's thinner. It's really the main difference between the iPad 1 and the iPad 2. Um, what differentiates the iPad over any other tablet is its maturity, its maturity in applications. Um, roughly there's 60,000 applications specifically built for the iPad format. Um, so any application that you can really think about is pretty much there for, for, your, for your pick and choosing. Um, but the experience behind the iPad um, is exactly that. It's an experience that can't really be something that's explained. Um, it's just very, very user friendly, very streamlined, um, and, and very secure. Um, hmm? And addictive. And addictive. And addictive. <laughs> exactly. Um, it comes in three form factors. So we talked about um, memory. So it comes in a 16 gigabyte, a 32 gigabyte, and a 64 gigabyte. Um, and that's pretty much the only limitation. Um, one of the major limitations with the iPad is if you get the 16 gigabyte and you find that you're you need a little bit more memory, there's no way to expand the memory on the iPad. Um, so just be careful what you're choosing. Um, that's, that's really the main thing. Um, it does have a front-facing camera on the iPad 2, so FaceTime and Skype that we talked about is now available for, for the iPad 2. Um, 9.7 inch display and um, Safari web browser. Any specific questions on there that? There we go. Yes, there you go. With the nice pink cover? Yes, so the, the smart cover <laughs> is, is what it's known for, exactly. <laughs> Uncover it. You just see. can't print from that, right? You can't print from that. Uh, you can actually print this application. Print so like wireless? Wireless, uh, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing with them afterwards. Exactly. Exactly. No, it's, it's great. I mean, it's great for wirelessly out. No. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah. So a lot of printers get my gigabytes printed to my megabytes. To my yeah. So a lot of printers are Bluetooth capable and, and Wi-Fi capable. So you can use these tablets. Um, the uh, the iPad does not have a USB port like a computer would. Um, so you would utilize a lot of the, the the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability to get information one to the other. It doesn't have external memory, so again, all the memory um, that you choose is what it is. Um, but extremely solid product, very popular, lightweight. Um, Easy to use. Very intuitive. Very intuitive. That is the main thing to take away from Apple is, is that it's extremely intuitive. It's really the experience behind Apple and, and what they stand for. Yesterday I had to look at an ad that was an attachment to my email. I was trying to use my phone and I couldn't. I just couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. Boom, there it is. I mean, this is yeah, a lot of email, there too. Yeah, email, Facebook, okay. I mean, everything. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, and she showed you the iPad. This is the iPad 1. Um, so just to give you a perspective of, of what it looks like. And you can see it in landscape and, and portrait mode. Um, but again, the, the iPad 1, just a little bit heavier. Um, it's. Uh, it doesn't have a camera, Callen. and it doesn't have as fast as a processor as the iPad too. And will that calendar on the iPad sync with the Google Calendar or the Outlook Calendar? You can have them sync together, yes. Yeah, it's not going to be as um, streamlined as, as the Google to Google um, platform, but yes, you can have the calendar pull from, from different calendars. And you can pull your Google Calendar up on the... Mm -hmm. on the any of the tablet devices. Yeah, I have exactly. mine right here. Exactly. Meaning calendar, like in the droid. So the iPad right. 2 basically right. will, it will just take the place of the netbook then? Correct. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's where the maturity of tablets is pretty much going. Mm -hmm. um, you still have strengths with the, the netbook. One is a real keyboard. Um, two yes. is the USB connection. Um, and the fast processor, 1.6 processor. Um, but the netbooks as we know it, 
are going to be few and far between in the next three to five years versus tablets. What's the processor on my iPad 2? Uh, one gigahertz. Yeah. Um, which is, it's actually pretty good for a tablet because tablets work a little bit different than, than um, netbooks. Um, so one gigahertz processor um, is not the same as a one gigahertz processor on a netbook, for instance, because it's the application standpoint and setup, it's, it's doing less with, with, with more memory, or I'm sorry, it's doing more with less memory, essentially. So you don't want to go lo lower than a one gigahertz processor, but you don't want to relate a one gigahertz processor with a netbook and a, and a pad, because they're they just built completely differently. Can you multitask with an iPad? You can multitask with an iPad, and that's really going back to your previous applications. Um, it's not like the Palm, like I said, where you can have multiple applications running at the same exact time. But if you open one application, you want to go back to the previous one, and then go back and forth, you can do that. Okay, so it's not going to be good for listening to music while you're working? Well, I'm sorry, you can do that. Yeah, you can have music playing in the background, um, and then um, you know, be opening an email, for instance, but you would not be able to um, watch a YouTube video and write an email at the same time, okay. like you could with the Palm. What would it do like the netbook was doing to me, where it's it's not a steady it screen? Up. Yeah. No, no. The um, the engineering behind the tablets is is very good, very good. I mean, the only choppiness that you would come across is if you're streaming video and you're in a bad area in terms of reception. But in terms of the capability of the actual iPod or the, the, um, the iPad, in other words, if you, were, if you had iTunes in there and you're listening to your iTunes, there would be no pickups whatsoever. Listening to iTunes and then um, writing an email. 